Michael Jackson. The swing in his Jackson. And my the day for Michael Jackson's family, his elder brother Tito and member of the Jackson Five has died at the age of 70. Uh, a common threat to the whole family. And um, I think the family has handled it very well, but it's a very big pill to swallow. So. We're going to continue to love you. Tito Jackson's sudden death raises suspicions, especially since he was seen visiting Michael Jackson's grave just days before, something he hadn't done publicly in years. Sources say Tito had been talking about Michael more than usual, as if he was about to reveal something big. And now he's gone. <laughs> You have to wonder, did Tito know something about Michael's death that the world wasn't ready for? Was he silenced before he could reveal the truth? The Jackson family has long been surrounded by mystery and controversy, and this feels a little too convenient. It's really screwed up. We look for the bad in people all the time instead of trying to find good in people. And that's what's wrong with our world. When we got something good, we don't even know how to appreciate it. Michael's death in 2009 shook the world, but it was never without its share of conspiracy theories. Was he taken out because he knew too much? The King of Pop had his demons, sure, but many believe there was more to his death than just an overdose. And now, Tito? The timing feels off, like we're missing a piece of the puzzle. We felt that Michael was just a different type of person with talent, uh -huh. and he spent most of his childhood perfecting his talent. The Jackson brothers were legends, no question about it. But what if that success was always a problem for the industry? It's no secret the Jacksons were never fully accepted by certain circles. They were always fighting off controversies, lawsuits, media scandals, you name it. And the more you think about it, the more it feels like their success might have ruffled the wrong feathers. Could their rising power have been seen as a threat? Were they never meant to be as big as they became? to see what's 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 wrong with it you know maybe there's nothing wrong with it maybe it's just good here's something to chew on both michael and tito were entangled in the industry's messiest corners michael more publicly sure but tito wasn't exactly living in the shadows either and every time one of them seemed ready to open up about the truth something happened michael gone tito suddenly gone. Coincidence? Maybe. But it's starting to feel like there's a bigger picture here. Very, very disturbing. Tossed and turned. Couldn't sleep. But he will be remembered. The music industry has always been a ruthless place, and the Jacksons were never fully embraced by the powers that be. Maybe their success was a problem for those who wanted to maintain control. Maybe the Jackson family always had enemies in high places. After all, their influence crossed boundaries, broke records, and changed the game. That kind of power makes people nervous, especially when the people in control don't want to share the spotlight. Very tight, you know, and uh, tighter than people know. So was Tito's death just bad timing? Or was it part of something much darker? Two brothers, two legends, and now two sudden, suspicious deaths. Could Tito have known something about Michael's death that the world wasn't ready to hear? It seems too coincidental that as soon as Tito started to open up, he's no longer with us. Was he silenced before he could reveal the truth? Let's dig into what could really be going on here. Just four days before Tito Jackson's unexpected death at 70, he shared what ended up being his final message to fans. In a post on Instagram, he paid tribute to his younger brother, the king of pop, Michael Jackson. As the at least heard, heard member of the group as a background singer who played the guitar. Tito posted a heartfelt image of Michael's memorial in Munich, Germany, with a caption that read, Before our show in Munich, my brothers Jackie, Marlon, and I visited the beautiful memorial dedicated to our beloved Michael Jackson. We're deeply grateful for this special place that honors not only his memory, but also our shared legacy. Thank you for keeping his spirit alive. At first glance, it seemed like a touching moment of reflection. But looking back now, was this post hinting at something deeper? Something more ominous? No one knew at the time that this would be Tito's final message to the world, a tribute to his brother right before he took his own secrets to the grave. 
Fans were shocked by his sudden death, but the real shock came when people started revisiting the unresolved mysteries surrounding his life. One person wrote, Rip Tito Jackson. Without his courage to defy his dad and pick up his guitar, we might not have witnessed the birth of the Jackson 5 or seen Michael Jackson become the greatest entertainer. Tito's talent as a guitarist was the foundation of it all. Another one added, We need to give Tito his flowers. He broke Joe's guitar string. He is literally the reason the group was formed. We wouldn't have the J5. R.I.P. Papa T. Tito Jackson had been in Munich just days before his passing, gearing up for a performance with the Jacksons alongside his brothers Jackie and Marlon. Everything seemed normal for the group, business as usual. But then, tragedy hit on Sunday. Tito suffered a suspected heart attack while driving from New Mexico to Oklahoma. The news was a gut punch to fans and family alike, with family friend and former Jackson manager Steve Manning confirming the shocking loss. No one saw this coming. This morning, yeah. uh, tough news for many of us waking up to this uh, this morning. Tito Jackson helped originate the Jackson 5 with his brothers Jackie, Jermaine, Marlon, and of course Michael Jackson. Though the official cause of Tito Jackson's death is still unknown, the loss hit his family hard, especially his three sons, Taj, Tyrrell, and TJ, who made up the band 3T. They poured their hearts out in emotional tributes, saying, We are shocked, saddened, and heartbroken. Our father was an incredible man who cared about everyone and their well-being. Tito's passing left behind nine grandchildren and a legacy as one of the original members of the legendary Jackson 5. But with his death came the loss of any chance to fully uncover the darker mysteries that surrounded his life. As his sons wrote, some of you may know him as Tito Jackson from the legendary Jackson 5, some as Coach Tito, or some as Papa T. Nevertheless, he will be missed tremendously. It will forever be Tito time for us. Please remember to do what our father always preached, and that is love one another. We love you, Pops. Your boys Taj, Terrell, and TJ. His son's mother, Dolores D.D. D. Martez, whom Tito married in 1972 and divorced in 1988, also left a cloud of mystery behind. Her death was never fully resolved, and it's said to have haunted Tito until his final days. Tito Jackson. Mystery has surrounded her tragic death since she was found floating face down in her boyfriend's backyard swimming pool. Tito Jackson's life was marked by its share of tragedies, the most haunting being the death of his ex-wife, Dolores D.D. Jackson, in 1994. Found dead in a swimming pool at just 39, her death was initially ruled accidental, until things took a dark turn. Her boyfriend at the time, Donald Bahana, was later charged and convicted of second-degree 1998, shattering the notion that it was a tragic accident. Bohana served 24 years before being granted parole in December 2022, but even now, questions still swirl around the true circumstances of Dee Dee's death. Doctors had already pronounced her dead before her sons, TJ, Taj, and Tyrrell, could even make it to the hospital. TJ recalled to ABC News 2020, I just had a sixth sense in my head, as if I knew already it was terrible, and I knew already that my mother wasn't with us. It was just a nightmare. It's like a kid's worst memory. In 1998, four years after Dee Dee's death, Bohana was convicted of second degree and sentenced to 15 years to life. Despite serving 19 years in prison, he still claims he For Tito, her death marked the coldest day of our lives a wound that never fully healed. The mystery and pain surrounding Dee Dee's passing likely stayed with Tito until his own death, leaving behind more questions than answers. Tito Jackson and Dolores Martes, as she was known before they married, had met at Fairfax High School in Los Angeles. He said that while he was a shy young man, Dee Dee Jackson was outgoing. Tito Jackson, on releasing solo music at age 62, she had ran up to me and said happy birthday and gave me a kiss on the cheek, Tito Jackson said. They wed right out of school in 1972. Dee Dee Jackson became part of the whirlwind of fame surrounding the Jackson 5. Tito Jackson said that she was treated like a sister and that everyone loved her. Terrell Jackson said his mother stayed out of the limelight and enjoyed simply raising him and his brothers. They, the Jackson 5, would go on tour, he said. So a lot of times it was us three and mom at home. I think my mom knew that it was not going to be a quote-unquote normal life so she made it as normal as possible.
Todd Jackson called her the perfect role model for us. In 1993, however, she and Tito Jackson divorced. Months later, at the age of 39, Dee Dee Jackson started dating Bohana, 59, and on that fateful night in August, she died. The Jackson family said they immediately had questions. They did not believe Dee Dee Jackson accidentally drowned in the pool because, they say, she was terrified of water. My first question was, drown? What was she doing in the water? Tito Jackson said. You know, cause Dee Dee and I, neither of us swam. That didn't line up with anything that we believed in knowing our mom and knowing how much she feared the pool, Todd Jackson said. Also, Tito Jackson said the bruises and the damage on her body seemed to indicate that there had been scuffles and fights. It points to a murder to me, in the first degree, Tito Jackson said. This tragedy haunted Tito's life, but he never let it overshadow his music. The Jackson Five, formed in 1964 by Tito and his brothers Jackie and Jermaine, quickly grew to include their younger siblings Marlon and Michael. From a young age, Tito was destined for a life in music. At just 10 years old, he began playing guitar after his father Joe Jackson caught him tinkering with his instrument and breaking a string. Instead of punishing him, Joe demanded Tito play for him. Impressed, he bought Tito his own guitar and the rest was history. But this was not the only tragedy he was dealing with. His brother Michael Jackson's death was also traumatic for him. True to MJ's words, the tour turned out to be his last as he passed away the same year he made that announcement. The comedian noted that MJ didn't announce the tour in a celebratory tone. Instead, he seemed exhausted, as if he was tired of fighting the evil forces in the industry and had resigned himself to his fate. Tito appears to believe that MJ's passing was pre-planned by industry power players who were threatened by the influence he held. One of them wrote, If you weren't around in the 80s, you really can't understand just how big Michael was around 1982 to 87. No artist has ever reached the height he did during the thriller era. The posters, the MJ buttons, jackets, the glove, MJ conquered the world. Another one added, It's no secret MJ had a massive following around the world and could have had a huge impact taking the industry down. They take out anyone with a huge following that stands in their way. Others have also suggested that the industry doesn't take kindly to people like Tito and MJ, which is why they've tried to cancel them. One fan commented, Never in a million years did I think that this dude would be a voice for truth and reason. If it was a book or movie, nobody would believe his story arch, but here we are in real life and Kat is preaching truth. Prayers for this man. Other commenters like this fan shared their own reactions to MJ's passing. They wrote, I was napping when Michael Jackson officially passed. I jolted up from a deep sleep, walked crusty-eyed downstairs to see my brother and grandmother watching the news while they were trying to get word on Michael's condition. I pray he knew Jesus, but more importantly that Jesus knows him. That's my hope for Michael, and that he's performing for the Most High. Tragically, Michael Jackson's journey to reclaim his legendary status was derailed by chronic back pain, a result of an onstage accident in 1997. This lingering pain led to his dependence on pain medication, which severely affected his sleep patterns, particularly during the preparation for his This Is It tour. In this crucial time, the responsibility for Jackson's health fell to Dr. Conrad Murray, who had been hired by the show's promoter, AEG Live. Dr. Murray administered prescription drugs to manage Jackson's pain and sleep issues, most notably the powerful anesthetic Propofol, which ultimately played a role in his untimely death. Of course, um, the most hidden treasure trove of his life is with me, but I have protected Michael up till now. At the same time, the production crew grew increasingly concerned about Michael Jackson's apparent frailty, especially given the immense physical demands placed on him during rehearsals for This Is It. Aware of the grueling schedule, they urged him to maintain a healthy diet to keep his energy up. According to Untouchable, one of the people working closely with Jackson in those final days was magician Ed Alonzo, who had been brought on to create spectacular illusions for the show. Alonzo recalled that just before rehearsals began at 9 p.m. on June 24th, he witnessed what may have been Jackson's final meal, a simple dish of chicken and broccoli. This small detail now holds a poignant weight, offering a glimpse into Jackson's last hours before the tragic events that followed. Nothing that has been inflammatory about my friend. I, have, I protected Michael. You see, 
when I had to meet him at the house with a G official. The expectations placed on Michael Jackson to deliver sensational performances throughout his 50-night residency were monumental. While undoubtedly motivated to provide his fans with an unforgettable experience, reports indicated that the singer was facing significant financial challenges. Agreeing to the shows was seen as an opportunity to revitalize not only his career and reputation, but also his financial standing. Consequently, the early rehearsals proved to be demanding, with the King of Pop grappling with poor health and inadequate sleep, causing concern among the production team. Despite the pain and suffering that I've encountered. Facing these challenges, Jackson was notably absent for several early rehearsals. As the opening night of This Is It in London loomed just a few weeks away by the end of June, the pressure intensified for things to fall into place, underscoring the urgency to overcome obstacles and present a triumphant performance. During the last rehearsal at the Los Angeles Staples Center, multiple witnesses, including Ed Alonzo, attested to its resounding success. Jackson appeared notably happier and healthier than in any preceding rehearsal, leaving a positive impression on the observers. The session extended until midnight and encompassed Jackson's complete repertoire of hits. As the night concluded, there was a collective conviction that they were moving in the right direction. Jackson expressed satisfaction and gratitude to the team, ending the evening on an optimistic note. However, fate took a tragic turn, marking the final appearance of the King of Pop before the team. Despite Michael Jackson's evident energy and enthusiasm during his final rehearsal, he grappled with issues at home, particularly related to sleep. Despite his genuine excitement about the quality of the This Is It performance, calming himself down proved challenging, as detailed in Untouchable. Nonetheless, he made an effort to go straight to bed with Dr. Conrad Murray tasked with preparing medications aimed at aiding the overworked star in getting much needed rest for his comeback residency. Between 1.30 a.m. and 3 a.m., Murray administered three different sedatives, Valium, Ativan, and Versed. Additional doses were given throughout the night as Jackson's insomnia persisted. Michael Jackson never mentioned a single doctor to me who was treating him with opioids, propofol. Disturbingly, reports indicate that Michael Jackson's final request to Dr. Murray was for some milk. However, this seemingly innocent term concealed a more ominous reality. Untouchable reveals that Milk was Jackson's nickname for Propofol, a medication to which he had developed a dependency due to chronic pain. Shockingly, Murray administered this substance at 10.40 a.m., marking a tragic turn of events in the life of the iconic performer. In an interview with the Associated Press, Kai Chase recounted the unsettling moment the following morning when she sensed that something was gravely amiss. I thought maybe Mr. Jackson is sleeping late, Chase said. I started preparing the lunch, and then I looked at my cell phone and it was noon. About 12.05 or 12.10, Dr. Murray runs down the steps and screams, Go get Prince! He's screaming very loud. I run into the den where the kids are playing. Prince, Jackson's oldest son, runs to meet Dr. Murray, and from that point on, you could feel the energy in the house change. I walked into the hall and I saw the children there. The daughter was crying. I saw paramedics running up the stairs. Around lunchtime, Murray rushed down the stairs, urgently calling for Jackson's son, Prince. The situation escalated when paramedics arrived and hurried to Jackson's room, prompting the family to gather downstairs, where they initiated prayers. Chase, in a surreal turn of events, was asked to leave the house while Jackson was being transported to the hospital. Chase recalls, we were all praying, help Mr. Jackson be okay. Then everyone was very quiet. After administering Propofol to Michael Jackson and leaving him alone, Dr. Conrad Murray returned to discover that the iconic pop star was not breathing. Despite his efforts to resuscitate Jackson, who had experienced respiratory arrest, Murray was unsuccessful in reviving him. Upon stepping outside on that fateful day, Kai Chase observed a scene of urgency and distress. Ambulances occupied the courtyard and a crowd had assembled. Chase, who had been hired by Jackson in March, experienced a unique journey with the pop star. Initially let go in May, she returned to Jackson's service on June 2nd. During her tenure, she noted that Jackson's primary focus was on maintaining a diet centered around fresh and healthy food, not only for himself but also for the children under his care. She said she prepared meals for the family and occasionally for Murray. She said Jackson was in training for his upcoming shows in London and told her, 
you have to take care of me. According to Kai Chase, on typical days, Dr. Conrad Murray would bring Michael Jackson the specially prepared fruit juice drink she crafted, accompanied by granola with almond milk. The pop star's lunch, shared with the children, featured a menu ranging from items like spinach salad to chicken. Sometimes Dr. Murray would join them for dinner, which might include dishes such as seared ahi tuna. Chase mentioned that the doctor would consult with her regarding the 50-year-old singer's dietary preferences, ensuring that he ate properly. Mr. Jackson's juices are some sort of breakfast for him for that morning. So around that time, I noticed I hadn't seen. Despite the routine, the only peculiar aspect was the presence of oxygen tanks. Chase admitted to never inquiring about the purpose of the oxygen and emphasized that she noticed no indications of Jackson being on D or experiencing declining health. Normally in the morning, he would bring oxygen tanks from upstairs downstairs, one in each hand, she said. Authorities conducted searches at Dr. Conrad Murray's Las Vegas home and medical office as part of an investigation, which also involved raids of his clinic and storage in Houston the previous week. Pending toxicology reports, investigators are operating on the theory that the potent anesthetic propofol may have played a role in causing Michael Jackson's heart to stop, as per a law enforcement official speaking to the Associated Press. Murray reportedly informed investigators that he routinely administered the D to help Jackson sleep, including on the early morning of June 25th. I spare myself. I am not a perfect man. Neither the official, speaking anonymously due to the ongoing investigation, disclosed that propofol is meant to be administered exclusively in monitored medical environments by trained personnel. Murray allegedly left the bedroom and returned to find the star unresponsive, marking a critical point in the unfolding events under investigation. The gravity of the situation ultimately led to Murray's legal troubles. Police have said Murray is cooperating and have not labeled him a suspect, and his lawyer, Edward Chernoff, has said the doctor didn't prescribe or administer anything that should have K. Michael Jackson. Similar to Dr. Murray, Kai Chase revealed that she had been enlisted to join Michael Jackson for his comeback concerts in London. Interestingly, the request for her involvement came directly from Jackson's 12-year-old son, Prince Michael II. Prince said, Daddy wants me to tell you he wants you to go to London with us, she recalled. I said, tell your daddy that I'm pleased and honored. Having completed paperwork and submitted a copy of her passport to the Jackson staff, Kai Chase anticipated departing for London on July 3rd. However, on June 23rd, Jackson informed her, I'm packed and I'm ready to go. Sadly, just two days later, the pop icon passed away. This marked the end of what Chase described as her dream job and a picturesque period in her life. The journey began in March when Michael Williams, Jackson's assistant, contacted her. Initially unaware that the client was Jackson, she was informed that her services as a personal chef were requested. I couldn't believe it, she said. I asked him if I was on candid camera. I said, am I being punked? Kai Chase explained that Michael Jackson had reviewed her resume, which highlighted her experience cooking for Macy Gray and Jamie Foxx, along with catering a fundraiser for Barack Obama. Jackson was also aware of her multiracial background and the fact that Red Fox was her godfather. The rumor mill then went into overdrive, churning out countless explanations and theories about MJ's passing. One prominent theory suggested that MJ was deliberately eliminated and that the doctor was part of the plot all along. They also claimed that several medications were found at the singer's residence after his death, many of them listed under fraudulent names. According to a 2004 police report, the late singer was taking up to 40 anti-anxiety medications. As a result, fans believe that Dr. Murray was merely a victim of circumstances and should be let off with just a slap on the wrist. However, Paris Jackson, MJ's daughter, doesn't share those sentiments. Like her aunt Latoya, she believes her father was assassinated by people who were after his money and legacy. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Paris claimed that all the evidence points to this theory and that only true fans would understand it. He would drop hints about people being out to get him, she said. And at some point he was like, they're gonna one day. Asked by interviewer Brian Hyatt if she thought her father was murdered, the 18-year-old replied, absolutely because it's obvious, all arrows point to that. It sounds like a total conspiracy theory, but all real fans and everybody in the family knows it. It was a setup. Paris Jackson believes that all true fans and family members know it was a setup and a lot of BS. However, unlike some fans and her aunt Latoya, she doesn't blame Dr. Conrad Murray entirely.
Paris thinks the whole situation was like a chess game involving many people who had or wanted a stake in MJ's estate. She implied that the plot was far more complex and hinted that she knows more than she's letting on. By calling it a chess game, Paris suggested that revealing too much could complicate matters, as no one would want to take the fall for ending a musical icon whose fame and global reach could spell doom for anyone who tried to harm him. Thus, she believes the real culprits prefer to stay in the shadows and manipulate things from behind the scenes. So, Paris decided to keep what she knew to herself, hoping she could achieve justice for her father once she became rich and powerful. If she couldn't, the 25-year-old model hoped that someday her dad would get the justice he deserved. Speaking to Rolling Stone magazine, she said, I definitely do want justice, but it's a chess game, and I am trying to play the chess game the right way. And that's all I can say about that right now. However, still the rumors suggest why Tito's death happened when he was all talking about the death of MJ. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.